Tell us something about... Love. Right, uh, well, you'll simply have to forgive me if it's, it's not the best tale you've possibly oh. ever heard. <laughs> he ruled all Mongolia. He was brave and wise beyond equal. His name was Cambus Kar. He had two sons, the fighting arms of the Empire. But his jewel was a daughter, Princess Canacy. Oh, her beauty, I haven't the word. <clears throat> Still, it was the Khan's birthday, and everyone was gathered for the feast. But then, out of nowhere... <gasps> the Emperor of all India and Araby, my lord and protector, greets you on this day, and gifts to you. A stallion of brass that in the space of a single natural day will transport you anywhere on the globe. Turn this pin and he will vanish out of sight. Also, for Lady Canacy, the ring's power. Wearing it, there isn't a bird flying in the heavens whose language she won't understand. This sword has the power to cleave through any armor. And no man blooded by it will ever see the wound heal until... <sighs> Magnificent! Wine, spices, music! The reverie continued all night, well beyond my humble vocab. And this strange crimson night, he was chosen to dance with Princess Canacee. But she bade him adieu long before the night's end, as sensible women tend to. So the morning mist was still thick on the ground when she woke her handmaidens to join her on a walk across the parks. <laughs> a woman's crying resounded through the trees. But where was she? And then Canacy understood. On her thumb, she now wore the ring with the power of bird's language. <laughs> it was a peregrine falcon, and soon she learned her sad story. There was a grey feather hawk. He flew the same skies as me. I gave him my love. He swore his heart was mine. Our love was true. Except he was a deceiver, a two-face. A red kestrel crossed his path and in an instant he was in love with her. I was clean forgotten. Now that kestrel possesses my lover and I am without hope or cure. While Canacee carried the falcon back to her rooms, the others were only just waking up. Oh. Algasif had been too busy drinking to learn how to ride the brass horse, so when... Oh. Oh. Hey! Stop! Help! Whoa there! The pen in the ear! Just turn the pen! The pen is... Help! Help me, someone! Now I understand. This was always your intention. I would have instructed him had he only oh. asked... I will go in search of him. And leave the kingdom without both its generals? I have no choice. Then you must take this. They will protect you. Algasif travelled twice 10,000 miles before he learned to control the brass stallion. Somewhere over the Indian oceans. He made landfall in an island palace. He was overcome with the beauty of this woman. She could only be a princess. Well, I mean no harm. Please, you're safe. And who are you? I am Prince Algasif, son of Cambus, Khan of... Well, tell me your name. Theodora. Bring him here! I shall return for you, Theodora. The Crimson Knight sought audience with the great Khan. I beg to ask for the hand of your daughter in marriage. I believe she also. Maybe once. Now I know I will never find a man worthy of trust. First you take my sons from me. Render our city defenseless. Now you attempt to steal my daughter. Never! She loved him, but the falcon's story had hardened her heart against all men. Prince Cambolo spent many months searching for his brother across all the lands of the east. A prince called And Alice. still there was no word. My brother. No trace of him. The son of Cambus. And then a mysterious horsewoman crossed his path and in an instant he was in love with her. He forgot the quest for his brother, the barbarian threat massing to attack his city. Father, 
We have no choice. I will fight them all. I can save the city. Crown me king, and I can call on all the armies of India and Araby. Take the invincible sword. Take my kingdom. Any man who attacks this city, my city, risks the anger of all Arabia. In a city crawling with spies, the Crimson Knight cannot even tell Canacy the truth. He was only posing as its new ruler to force the enemy into retreat. How can I prove to you that my love is real? Do not hope. Cambolo was entranced by love of this woman, but she was a sorceress, ensnaring any man who crossed her path. Look out! She does not love you! She trapped us all this way! Escape while you oh. can! Thanks to the ring, he heard the warning. The trance was broken. <laughs> Theodora's father had wasted no time arranging for her to marry the king of China. To delay the marriage, Theodora feigned madness. The Sultan summoned any and all physicians. Argus! Quiet yourself. Quiet. But you have calmed her. Keep well back. The cure is incomplete. Of course. Gods! No! Come to me now! Come! Both brothers raced homewards, Cambolo guided by the hawk who had saved him. But they found the Crimson Knight's flag now flew over the city. They demanded to fight to redeem their honor. Oh, oh, Garsif had forgotten the invincible sword. The brothers were near death until... I seized this kingdom only to protect it. My subterfuge needed to be total. Now it is yours again. <laughs> Hannesy now knew he was truly worthy of her love. Cambus decreed that there should be a better and bigger feast. Suffice to say that there were three weddings. Algasif to Theodora, Canacy to the Crimson Knight, who took the name of Cambolo in honor of his new three brother. Three marriages, three lives. Uh, even the birth.